There's only one problem, big problem. I haven't got another case to put the new parts in there. As your first PC build, do not build in a micro ATX case. <laughs> Bet you thought this day would never come. We are finally at stage two of the One PC Two of Them All series challenge. The show where I give you full responsibility to decide every aspect of my next PC build for 2019. So we're gonna get cracking with the build. This is my main filming area, my main content creation area. I've got three screens. So we're gonna have to use my existing Fractal Design R5, which is a fantastic case and we did agree on this. So what we're gonna do, is something which I'm not looking forward to because that requires me switching off my computer and while this is switching off I'm going to introduce you to a sleeper PC case this is an old Antec case very very old left by a client and unfortunately I haven't got any other suitable case because one of the reasons why I'm going to use this is it will fit an ATX motherboard, which is my current computer Asus motherboard at the moment. And it's got one, two, three, and four, at least four drive bays where I could put my existing drives. Because at the end of the day, I also still need to content create, which means I need to edit these videos to give you while we are building for this one piece to them all series. So stay tuned. Let's check it out. Hey Nip Tags and welcome this is Ash from Hill My Tech and if you're new here on this channel we do reviews, repairs and tutorials of tech so you can unleash your true potential by subscribing and enable the bell notification icon so that I can help you go from newbie to techie and please support the channel by clicking my Amazon affiliate links for US and UK in the description below. I will show you the video of the case swap because there are some things you probably need to learn. Okay, I just managed to disconnect everything. Obviously, it's a bit dusty. Let's put it up on the table. Oh my God, this is heavy. And see what's happening in there. Right, come on on, i show you. We haven't got too much in there. You've seen this one, we did a troubleshoot when my computer crashed, it's the same one. Very good case, fractal design. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be removing the graphics card, motherboard, and all these drives. And I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna keep using the same VS550 for a new build or put a brand new power supply, but I think this one might actually be okay, so we'll see. It's now morning and we're back into my shed. I haven't worked in so long. I just tidied it up a bit uh, to be able to do some desktop tutorial. So come over, I'm gonna show you what we did so last night i finished transplanting all the components well most of the components from the fractal design into the crappy antec okay i also did a quick post test without connecting to a display it did post the only thing i left was the data cables um, which i'm not going to touch because we're going to be using this case eventually so i managed to scramble some old data cables and i've just hooked them up it's not ideal and this case is so crap what I also ended up doing, cab, what do you call them things, the trays, the caddy trays, whatever, from Fractal Design, which had my disc. I just grabbed the whole thing from here, put it in there because the Antex own caddy designs, as you can see, these are old stuff. They are not even designed to hold in 2.5 inch or SSDs. I thought because I would eventually have to bring these discs back into the main PC, so I might as well just scramble them in there. The only problem is the cover won't close because the edges are a bit too tall, but it's not a problem. Now this case is a bit smaller, as you can tell, although it fits the ATX motherboard and it hasn't got space for extra cooling like uh, water cooling or even extra fans. So right now in this case, I've only got one rear fan, which is not even connected to the motherboard, but it's connected via a dreaded Molex connector. So we haven't got much cooling in there, but because I feel that all the fans are pushing air out, and we're not going to be using this for long, so it should be fine. I'm not too bothered. I was planning to put some fans here, but I can't be bothered. Now, the thing that I left is the Corsair VS550, which I may leave and to use for our new build. I did consider to put the 750X. Remember this bad boy that Corsair sent me, the PSU that Corsair sent me when we had the troubleshoot issues with my computer. And it's been brand new until yesterday. And I stuck it in this system because, because this is the FX8350 uh, and I've never overclocked this system. If we're going to do some overclocking and testing and messing about i might as well leave some extra power uh, for the manipulation of the voltage obviously what we're gonna have to do now is give this fractal design a good uh, clean because there's a bit of dust but i do really like this case and this also helped me to save money and if you can do that absolutely fine to do one last thing i would tell you guys is that come over here you see <clears throat> this is a standard micro atx case and this is a standard mid tower case okay both of these actually but this one is a bit bigger because uh, the antec hasn't got extra cooling and fans etc but this one is a bit bigger my advice to you if you have no problem with desk space 
okay space as your first pc build do not build in a micro atx case if you can afford the space if you can't if you need a small case fine but don't even if you're going to go with a micro atx motherboard or even an itx motherboard there's two reasons one as a first time builder you need space to be able to work around it's very difficult to work in a crowded uh, case especially because you don't know what you're doing you're going to make mistakes and you're going to need to kind of redo stuff so trust me second reason is get a good case even if you start out with a micro atx or itx board doesn't matter and you can always upgrade later even a bigger board to add more components whatever it is and there is a difference between cheap cases and better quality cases in terms of not hurting yourself too much too less uh, uh, screws for example so something to consider okay enough chatting we need to go hook this computer back onto my main work area and i'm curious to find out if it will work i mean it should because we've done nothing except transplanting but things do go wrong sometimes and i'm hoping it's going to be fine the only difference would be because the cable the data cables now might be in different order so when i boot up into windows i probably need to go into bios and then i would need to just change some uh, boot order moment of truth i do have one two three monitors connected and also a tv now if you come at the bottom i'll show you i've just plugged in the sleeper pc case all antec and i've tried to connect everything as good as i can i'm not too sure about the vj cables we might have an issue with that and i'm hoping that this video now is not going to turn into a troubleshoot video because it's not turning on so fingers crossed let's press the uh, on button okay yeah beep we've got one beep let's watch the monitors yep we've got monitor fantastic i may have to go into bios to change the boot order please give me something give me something yes we're booting in the windows fantastic now usually my middle screen is where it boots but obviously because the uh, boot order probably changed the data cables change and this is what you need to do i'm going to go into windows and um, try to rearrange the order now one problem i may have is i think my keyboard's going to play up because this is the corsair keyboard whatever it's called and it's not responsive right now and i think it might need to be reset but it's not a major issue i can always connect on the keyboard okay it's fine now so we are back i'm just gonna have to sort out the display setting later but as long as we have some sort of boot up so fantastic okay we got all the three screens working so i'm quite chuffed with this i did record the actual case swap footage but as a noob i didn't click the camera setting on my wireless microphone the comica ws60 combo so we have no audio while you enjoy some b-roll footage of the case swap here are some further pc case buying advice the fact that this sleeper pc is both beneath my desk and out of sight and my experience in using the same pc i have been for the past four years for all my content creation work remains unchanged is further testimony that you should not obsess on the pc case a non-windowed version of any PC case will provide you with more noise reduction and cost less money than its windowed equivalent. This Fractal Design R5 was and still remains a perfect choice for my situation and as long as it remains in good condition I anticipate I will do my next upgrade in the same case in a few years unless something drastic changes in the PC industry or that tech sponsor finally comes through. This video is not sponsored by the way. There are of course better cases with some more modern features like front USB Type-C ports and PSU covers which will hide more cables but these are not significant for my situation. Cable management is also something to look out for and this fractal design r5 provides plenty of cable management at the back and since the front is covered all you need is to tie the excess cables out of the way for better airflow the only exception to this advice is when you need a windowed case to display your awesome water cooling setup or whatever other fancy rgb led lighting you may want to diy mini itx cases tend to cost more than micro atx cases or even some standard mid tower cases having said that the most important element of your pc is components size fitting measure everything especially cooler height graphics card length and even weight this fractal design r5 when fully kitted is quite heavy and if you are planning to move the case occasionally its total weight needs to be assessed in terms of maintenance this is something a lot of people neglect and dust buildup can cause excess heat which is never a good thing for your pc so you should open up the case occasionally and consider a spring clean carefully of course and the frequency will vary according to your own mileage so whatever you decide to 
to buy, don't forget to use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below or whatever you choose to use as your next PC case. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. If there's anything I've missed out, please also jot them down so others can benefit and I may also include them in our next episode of the One PC to Rule Them All Challenge series. Now it's time to go vote in the next poll. 1. Should we do a PC case dust clean? 2. Should we go through everything you need to build, test and use the PC? 3. Should we just crack on with the actual PC assembly? Or 4. Something else. Go to the community tab on YouTube and vote. And remember that I will be doing my best to continue daily uploads like this one for this whole series, which is what you guys voted on. So definitely consider subscribing and enabling the bell notification icon. And go watch my troubleshoot a desktop computer series. It has plenty of information to help you solve any PC problems you may have up until booting into Windows. As usual, this was Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. Remember to unleash your true potential. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.